Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Peter Langan from Bloomberg News, and I'll be moderating this um, discussion. Um, I think the film speaks for itself. Um, so, um, without any further comment on that, I'd just like to introduce our speaker today, which, as everyone is aware, is Ian Thomas Ash, uh, the film director of A2 BC. Um, I'm sure all of you have had a chance to look at the, uh, the uh, paper that, uh, announcement for the event today, which explains the issues, primarily about the distribution of the film in Japan. Uh, so Ian is here today to discuss the latest on that. Um, before he begins his speech, can I just ask if everyone make sure you've turned off or muted your cell phones so that we don't have interruptions. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for coming today and for, um, for watching this film. Um, I would also like to thank the FCCJ for holding this press conference. It's actually the second time uh, for this film to be screened here. It was screened last year before the world premiere. Um, I would also like to begin by saying it's a little bit unusual that for a documentary like this that it's still um, being screened and that it's still something that's being talked about. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that we're talking about it under the circumstances that we're talking about it under, but I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to use this as an opportunity to talk about some of the, uh, the issues. Um, I would like to say as well that I'm not exactly sure um, what I'm going to say in, in the sense that I want to make sure that I leave as much time as possible for your questions. And so I'm going to be very brief in my comments and then hopefully your questions will be able to take us into areas that you want to go into more deeply. I will also say that um, I have just literally this morning come from a meeting with the distributor of the film. And so I have some news um, about that as well. Um, first, I would just like to say that this film, uh, it was uh, filmed in 2012 in the autumn uh, for a, a period of about four months until January of 2013. And so this is um, a record of that time in Fukushima. This is not something uh, that is um, current in that sense. It is a record of what happened almost two years ago. Um, the film um, had the world premiere um, in, uh, in Germany in 2013 and then it went on uh, to be screened in festivals around the world and eventually it was uh, given distribution in Japan um, and the first uh, private screening that was done in Japan was in the autumn of 2013 and uh, it had a theatrical release in Japan starting in May of last year. That went on uh, to screen in nine cities around Japan and then went into a series of private screenings, Jishujoi um, in Japanese, and it was screened over 80 times. Um, one of the things that I am also having a little bit of trouble uh, thinking about is exactly what I can talk about. Um, there are some things that um, in the original contract that I signed for distribution in the film, there is a non-disclosure non clause. And um, and so there are some things specifically about the contract that I can't talk about. Um, but uh, suddenly, as as probably all of you here know, um, the 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 HBC screening committee um, decided in March uh, that they were no longer going to be able to screen the film and uh, cancellations of um, the screenings that were taking place in the latter part of March and beyond were all canceled. And uh, any, um, any requests for future screenings were also, um, they were responded to by saying that the film was no longer being screened. Um, and so one of the, one of the things that was uh, difficult for me and was not resolved until this morning was that although the ATBC screening committee decided that they were no, no longer going to screen the film, they still held the rights to the film. And so it was, I had a lot of people saying to me, well, why don't you just screen it yourself? But I, I did not have the rights back to the film, and so I wasn't able to do that. 
And one of the other issues um, that I would like to address as well is, is that um, with the original agreement that I made with the mothers and the families in the film, I agreed not to release a DVD of the film in Japan and to not put the film on the internet. And the reason for that was because they were concerned, had a very real uh, and justified concern um, that about, um, about their... Um, protection of their families and although they wanted their story to be told um, there, there was a fear that they would face a backlash and unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately that has happened and um, there are people in the film that have been uh, the recipients of uh, of a backlash, uh, particularly on social media, on Twitter and on Facebook. And so in an attempt to help protect them as much as possible, I agreed not to put the film on the internet. And so we went ahead and did theatrical screenings and these private screenings in, a ho in hopes that it would be kind of a more, uh, a more controlled um, way of screening the film. Um, so now I will specifically address um, uh, the, the reasons um, for the, the cancellations. Um, and one of the, I would like to say that one of the things that I'm, that I'm slightly concerned about is, is that this press conference is happening in English. And um, I think that this is a debate that I hope can happen in, in English and in, in the English press. But I also hope that, um, that this can happen um, in the Japanese press and for the Japanese speaking audience as well. Um, and so one of the concerns that I have is, is that um, you know that people that will be watching this live um, on the tweetcast. You know that that I, my hopes is that we can have, um, you know, that there will be remain an accurate record of what was said in Japanese. And I hope that there, at some point in the future, we'll be able to have maybe even some articles written in Japanese about this. Uh, so I would also like to preface um, what I'm about to say by saying that in many ways, this is not about A2BC. This is an issue that is not only about this film. This issue about uh, why this film cannot be screened is affecting all kinds of media and press in Japan. And the fact that it is, in my opinion and in the opinion of some of my fellow um, colleagues, it is becoming more difficult to have these kind of open and honest discussions about different things, including what is happening in Fukushima. Um, it it uh, came to our attention in the beginning of this year, in, in, um, in February, that one of the people in the film uh, was essentially um, a communist. Um, and the, the, the group is called Chukakuha, uh, li literally, it's middle core faction, and um, I don't know that there's an exact, really good English um, translation of the group. Um, one of my colleagues suggested that it could be uh, translated as, um, or described as, a communist political group whose tactics in the past have included violent confrontations with the authorities. Um, one of the things that I want to be very careful about is, is to not really talk so much about Chikakoha. I don't really know that much about it, um, and many of the people that I have spoken to about this problem also do not know very much about it. It's not a group that, to my understanding, has been particularly active in, in recent history. It has more of a, a longer 40-year history, and that it appears to have been more active uh, 40 years ago. Um, for me, I, I found out about this uh, issue um, over social media, and I and uh, I, I brought the information to the distributor uh, because, A, because I didn't understand fully what was being said, and B, because I thought that it may become a problem, and I thought that it was something that we should uh, begin to discuss and that we should be prepared to talk about, about what this meant. Um, what I was not prepared for was I was not prepared that without any proof, without any attempt really to kind of discover if there was even any veracity to this claim, the screening committee decided that they were uh, going to stop screening the film. So basically it took one word, it took the word chukakoha, or a kind of communist, for this committee to say, uh, we, we can't be a part of this film anymore. And that for me is problematic on so many levels. One is, is because the group itself is not named in the film, uh, at that point in time, we still had no, no proof that, that the rumor was even true. 
And although I think that if, if, it, if it came to light to be true, that, that, that there was a person in the film that was associated with a group that was historically violent, that that's something that we should talk about, it, it doesn't, what it doesn't do is it doesn't negate the story of the film. It doesn't negate the fact that there are children in Fukushima whose parents are concerned about their health. And that for me is what this film is about. Um, I would also like to add one more comment, um, and that is that the clinic that is in the film um, was also named as having ties to this group. Um, and again, if that's the case, then that's certainly something that I think should be discussed and should be talked about. But again, it's not the point of the film. And uh, this film has l literally has no, absolutely no connection to this group whatsoever. One of the unfortunate things that happened next was that it, it became clear that one of the groups that was holding private screenings of the film was a, a group called Nazen, which is also apparently connected to the Chugakaha movement. And they were um, holding screenings as anyone in Japan could do. And uh, the, the ATBC screening committee was not aware of their, of, of their political um, uh, mo motivations and so but by the time we, we figured out what was happening they had screened the film several times um, one of the accusations was that because they were screening the film that they had somehow either a funded the film or b that they were using the film to somehow collect money um, it's simply not true it is simply I have absolutely no connection to this group whatsoever um, every every single NPO that that screens the film takes a money collection after the film is being screened for a variety of, of, of purposes. One would be to, uh, to for Hoyo, for uh, projects to give children a summer camp away from Fukushima, to buy them vegetables from Western Japan, whatever. Um, and um, so uh, the fact that this one single group was collecting money, apparently, uh, is not any different than any other group. So. Basically, that's sort of the, the background. I'm sure you probably have lots of questions about that. I will say, as kind of my last comment, um, that at the meeting this morning with the ATBC screening committee, um, I was able to uh, agree uh, to a contract with them, and I have, as of today, uh, received the rights to the film back. And so it is now my hope that I will be um, working uh, to somehow be able to distribute the film. Probably what that means is through a series of private screenings that we will reestablish a way for groups to, uh, to screen the film again. And my hope is, is that we'll be able to do, to do that within the near future. So thank you very much for, um, for your time and I look forward to your questions. Okay. Um Thank you, Ian. I've got one question first before I open the floor up. Just to clarify that point, that you've gone then to this distributor today and they have said to you that because one of the people interviewed in your film is a member of this particular communist group, they have dropped the distribution. Is that correct? Yes. Um, the concern is... Basically, it's a, it's a, they have a company, and so their concern is, is that they have employees that they need to uh, protect, and that they're not able to go out on a limb for for one single film. I I one of the things that I want to be very clear is is that I'm extremely grateful to this committee, and I'm very grateful that they screened the film, that they took on the film in the beginning, and that they were able to bring the film to cinemas around Japan. And for that, I'm very thankful. I am disappointed with the decision that they felt like because of this rumor that they were not able to continue screening the film. That to me disappoints me. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to make them out to be this really bad or evil group of people. They are concerned citizens that also have to run a business. And so one of the things that I would like to highlight here is, is that is, is the atmosphere in Japan which is causing people to do what I consider to be self-censorship. I do not believe that this is censorship. I do not believe, as some of the rumors uh, said, that the government came in and told them to stop screening the film. Um, and if that is true, there certainly is no proof that I'm aware of. And so I believe this is a case of of them making an editorial decision in order to protect their company. And that to me is very unfortunate. It's unfortunate that, we are, that, that it is becoming the case where people are making decisions um, to self-censor. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll open the floor to questions then. Um, the procedure here is if you can come up to the microphone, identify yourself and the news organization you work for. The news media gets the first questions. If there's time, we can open the floor to anyone else who has questions. Uh, so, the floor is open. Yes, I'm from the uh, University of Tsukuba, and uh, my name is James Cole, by the way. Uh, one uh, thing I, I wonder, one of the points you brought up, uh, couldn't any film actually be contaminated by some politics? I mean, after all, you could make a film about Mickey Mouse, and one of the actors might be a communist, or maybe in her youth she threw bombs, maybe one of the cartoonists uh, did something bad in the old days. I mean, couldn't... I mean, do you think that these allegations are, are just being invented by uh, anonymous sources who don't like the film? What is your uh, opinion on this? You know, unfortunately, one of the ways that, that a person can be discredited in Japan very easily is to say that they are either ethnically Korean or communist. And so, yes, I do believe that to bring up, you know, the politics of of one of the mothers in the film is, 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 is at the very least, it's missing the point. And, and for me now to be accused of, of you know, I, that I should have known such a thing, well, you know, I didn't. When I interview somebody in a film, I don't ask for their CV and I don't ask for their political leanings. And, you know, for me, th this is one of the things, I was told to be very careful about what I said and I can find myself edi editing what I'm saying. Um, and so I apologize for that because what I don't want is, is, is for this to be, to be misunderstood, particularly in Japanese. But the truth is, is that if there's a communist in the film, so what? That's what I really think. If they've done something wrong, then they need to be, they need to be tried. But that's not to be in a court of public opinion. So yeah, I, I do think that, you know, that anybody who can look at a child in Fukushima getting a thyroid examination and say, gee, I wonder where the money that built that clinic came from is really missing the point. I'm not suggesting that it's not a problem. It is a problem and it's something that we should discuss, particularly if there's something illegal happening. But it doesn't discredit the film and it doesn't discredit me and it doesn't discredit the other mothers that are in the film. And one of the things that I feel very sorry about is, is that because I've made this film and because one person in the film is being accused of doing something wrong, all the other mothers in the film are being tainted with that and that's not fair. Who made the accusation? Well, people, you know, with anonymous icons and, you know, crazy names on Channel 2 and Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> so why should anyone believe them? Why should anyone believe them? Exactly right. But you know what? I'm thankful for this opportunity. Let's talk about it. Let's use this as an opportunity to talk about what's really happening. Let's turn it around and have, and have a debate because I think, I think this is a debate that's not being had and it should be having had. It should be being had. I did say in the beginning that we, we, the first questions go to the news media. I hope that's clear. Yes, I'm sorry, it's clear. No one else seemed to have a question. My name is Asby Brown. I'm with SafeCast. A disclaimer, I, I've talked with Ian quite a lot. Uh, I know him and I've heard about this issue. First, I want to say that congratulations on getting the rights back. Um, my understanding was that there were complaints that came into the distributor that sort of prompted their cold feet. Uh, and uh, I tend to agree with you that uh, it didn't seem justify that they did that. Do you know where the complaints came from? Uh, how would you characterize it? My initial impression was that it must have been right-wing groups or some pro-nuclear groups or something like that, but maybe that's not the case. So one of the things that the, that the ATBC screening committee was doing was um, they were also monitoring the Facebook pages and Twitter accounts of the film, including um, anything that was being said about the film. And so, um, you know, in pretty much real time, they were able to, to, to look at some of these things. I, my, my understanding, um, and so just to clarify your question, I, I, I'm, I'm not aware of, of a formal complaint being submitted to the, to the, the ATBC screening committee. Uh, what, it, what it is, I think, that it was a combination of, of um, what we were finding out on Twitter about the accusations, 
um, and then some more research that they were doing where they, where they saw, one of, the thing, one of their concerns that they said to me actually, and I would like to point this out as well, is, is that one of their concerns was that if this, if this es escalated and the accusations escalated and the film or me became discredited, they were concerned that the, that the very real purpose of the film would be missed. And so they were concerned that, that the film was going to be, was going to be contaminated. And so they, I don't think they really sort of knew how to, how to, what to do at that point. And uh, for example, one of the ideas that was bounced around, because we, we debated about it for a couple of days, was well, what if we just put out a statement which says that we're not connected to the Chukakaha movement, which I did. I put a general disclaimer on the website, which distanced myself from anyone using the film for political purposes. Um, but one of the things that they suggested doing was to prevent this group Nazen from uh, from from holding private screens of the film, but for me, that's that would a just bring attention onto this one group, and b it would imply that every other screening was something that we that we were okay with. And you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of weird groups out there, you know, particularly people that do any kind of political things, you know, and so it would be inaccurate to say that I that I support every single. Um, group that's screening the film. So, for example, when we move on now and, and, and hopefully can reestablish the private screenings of the film, my intention is to allow anyone to screen the film. That I'm not going to say, oh, well, this particular group is not going to be able to screen the film. But what I will say is, is that I'm not connected to any of these groups. And what they choose to do with the film is, is, their, own, is their own kind of decision and their own point. So if they want to ask me to, to go to the screening and speak after the film, I'm happy to do that. If they want to prepare their own guest and, and speak after the film, they're welcome to do that. But, what, but what, they're not, what is not okay is it's not okay to take the film and to use it for your own political gain and to act though, as though uh, the film was made for you or made by you or that you are somehow part of the inner, cir inner circle of having made the film. And so it does disappoint me that evidently at some of the screenings that were done by certain groups, they presented it as if uh, they were really directly related to the film when in fact that is not the case. Patrick Solnoy, Tsushi Zeitung from Switzerland. Well, um, I'd like to ask a question about the children of Fukushima. After all, that's what the film is all about. Um, your film was shot about two years ago, and you're showing very well the, the problem that people don't trust what is called science, that they lost complete trust in authorities, and they're completely lost in what they should believe and what they should not believe. Two years later, has this changed in a way, or is this confusion still absolutely the same? Um, thank you for your question. Um, you know, what's changed is that um, I am finding it more difficult to to find people who are willing to speak out. And I am making the follow-up to this film. Um, and one of the things that I struggle with is is finding people who are willing to, to speak out. One of the things that people have asked me is, okay, I will speak to you, but please cover my face or please change my voice. But it's very difficult to make a film like that. It's different maybe if you're writing a newspaper article. Um, and I, But I have to say, I understand and respect that fear as well. But what I don't understand is, is what, why should someone be afraid to say, I'm concerned for my children? You know, because I, really, I think the science is sort of out on this. It's been, what, 29 years since Chernobyl? We don't know everything that's been happening. We don't know everything. And I think that people say, well, you know, we want proof. We want proof that these thyroid issues are, are connected to radiation. Well, the truth is, is that no one really knows yet. And, and, and so what the mothers are saying is, is that if that's the case, if it's the case that we don't really know, well, then shouldn't we be protecting our children first? And then we can kind of figure out what's happening. But, but the opposite is happening. Oh, there's no problem, there's no problem. Uh, you know, and then, and then two years later, oh, actually, two years ago, we actually did release a bit more radiation than we thought we did or than we said we did. So it's, and so the fact that, that the mothers have, been, have, have lost um, the ability to trust what's happening, I think, is very justified, but also very unfortunate. Just, and while you're walking up here, please, I'll, I'll just add one thing. One of the other things that I have found is, is that the number of angry people is decreasing, but the angry people that are remaining are angrier. Hi, um, uh, my name is Hannah Sistik. I'm a Swedish freelance journalist. And uh, I'm curious um, what reactions you have um, received from the movie and also from if you, yeah, 
uh, what the what the consequences have been of, of making this movie and showing it in Japan. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, the 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 reactions have been varied. One of the things that I struggle with is um, is the, is that oftentimes the people that come to a screening of this film are already people who to some degree or another know about the problem. And so one of the things that I struggle with is how to get people who aren't aware of a problem, who don't know there's a problem, to really care about it. And so sometimes I feel a bit like I'm preaching to the choir in that regard. Um, but I think that, that the overwhelming reaction has been positive. I think um, when the film screens abroad, one of the first things that people say is, those women are so brave, so brave to have spoken out. And even the reaction in Japan has, for the most part, been been supportive, I think. Um, one of the benefits that I have to not really, you know, my, my reading and writing Japanese is, is not, is not, you know, so good. And so I can, I can kind of not really sort of pay attention to some of the, the negative things that are said. And somebody else is sort of looking at the, at the Twitter account and helping me with that, um, which means that my head isn't filled with a lot of garbage. Um, but there is some stuff that's being said. But one of the things is, is that that I wish would happen is is that if you have a problem with the film, I think that's that's fine. But let's talk about it. You know, come to a screening. Let's have let's have a debate about it. But but what I have a problem with is is attacking is is attacking the mothers in the film, for example, uh, particularly anonymously. I think that's a very cowardly reaction. Hi, Yang. Hi. Uh, that is Jimbo, the video news. Um, maybe I just missed the, missed the point. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't quite sure why this committee um, had to uh, cancel screening. Um, f as far as I've, I've heard, some um, nutcake wrote something on Twitter or Facebook pointing out that one of the person, persons appearing in the film is uh, maybe a member of uh, Chukakuha, just being a member of Chukakuha. Uh, once didn't make her criminal or anything, uh, and the committee had to cancel screening just for that. Uh, was that was there any sort of a explanation as to why, bes besides having someone on Twitter or Facebook indicating, uh, and have they confirmed that the accusation that the person is actually a member of this group, Chukakaha, even today? Uh, any 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 further information that I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, well, it was it was the, it was a combination of, of three things. One is is that it was a rumor that one of the people in the film was Chugakaha. The other one is is that the clinic that was you know very briefly in the film and not even named um, was Chugakaha. And the other was that a group connected to Chugakaha was doing Jishujoi, was doing private screenings. That those those together appear yes to be enough. Um, but you are you are. The fact that you still have a question, like how is it possible that that is enough to cancel screenings, I share your question. I, I also don't understand. For me, and I'm not, I don't mean to speak lightly about this issue, but for me it's more of a PR problem. It's more of a, well, here's what we knew when we knew it. You know, at the time of the filming, we certainly did not know that. Here's what we found out at this point in time, and here's what we know now. Um, you know that I think that that's something that we should talk about, and it's and, and I, we should make a press release um, about that. But again, I don't think that it undermines the the point of the film, which is this is a group of mothers who are concerned about their children. You know, uh, yeah, uh, apparently, and again, I want to be very careful about what I say because I'm, I know, this is not my field. But yes, apparently. Apparently, there are some some connections to this clinic, um, you know, in, in, in Fukushima. And, you know, to me, and again, I, I want to be very clear, I'm not making an excuse or, or, or anything for this group. But what I'm saying is, is that, yeah, you know, they were one of the first large clinics that was established in Fukushima that was offering independent testing of children and offering results that mothers, mothers could, could believe. The fact that they were able to build a large clinic with that many doctors so quickly and that their money might have come from a source that was politically involved somewhere, I guess, you know what, kind of makes sense. I'm not excusing it, but I'm, under, I'm trying to understand it. And so if that group has done something wrong, 
then that should be investigated and they should be held accountable. But it doesn't change the work that, that is being done at that clinic or the fact that that work needs to be done. Thank you for your questions. Um, I think, though, the, the question there, has it been determined that the individual who is supposedly a member of this group is actually a member or was a member of this group? So I, one of my colleagues asked me the same question about a month ago, and it was a moment where it was like, he said to me, well, have you talked to her? Have you, have, you, have you gone and spoken to her and asked her? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, don't you think you should? And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And it took somebody to tell me to do that, to do it. And it's something that I would be doing if I was making a film, but it hadn't occurred to me. I was sort of getting mixed up with all of the, the politics of the, of the distribution and didn't know what to do, and these things are happening. Um, and so I, I went and, and, and spoke to her. And, um, and, I, and she said, she actually asked me, I was, I was filming, I said, can I film you? And she said, yes. And um, so I said, I asked her to please explain to me how we met and her involvement in the film. And then she asked me, um, Ian, how come the screenings of the film were canceled? And I said, do you not know? And she said, well, I would like to hear it from you. And I said, well, the screenings were canceled because people are saying that you are Chukakaha. And she said, oh, that's what I thought. And I said, is it true? And she said, yes. My name is Eto Takanori, and I am mainly working for internet media. Well, I want to ask you about the, the economic aspects of your film. Well, how has been the uh, box revenue of the A2BC? Uh, and uh, isn't there the possibility that the distributor stop, stops uh, the screening because of the sales was, were uh, slow? Or otherwise, uh, or uh, the sales was great. If the uh, uh, the box revenue is was great, and suddenly the uh, distributor stops the screening, then that will support your point of view. And otherwise, I guess not. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So if I understand your question properly, um, you would like to know about, basically, if the film was not making any money, then maybe did they just cancel the contract because they had stopped making money? And if the film was making money and they stopped it, then that would support my cause. Right. Um, well, I don't, have the, I don't have the most recent numbers because uh, the film ha was screening until March. Um, I can tell you that the film was making uh, some money. It also cost money to make and to promote. Um, but screenings were canceled. A number of screenings were canceled. And the film uh, was continuing to receive requests to screen. Um, it's, it's a very small documentary. And so, no, we're not talking about a lot of money. But the film was being screened. And uh, there were requests for the, for the film to be screened. And the A2BC screening committee was not sort of, the whole point was not about making money. If the, film, if the point was about making a lot of money, then they wouldn't have taken the film on because th they knew when they took the film on that the DVD release of the film and internet release of the film was not going to be possible. And those are two of the ways that a distribution company would typically make money. And so they took on the film knowing that the film was not going to make a lot of money. But the film was still being screened. And so uh, any suggestion that this was simply, you know, because the film was, n was not making as much money as they had hoped that they had stopped screening the film is just ridiculous. Uh, any documentary film, the fact that the film is still being screened and that we're still sitting here today after two years, I mean, a typical documentary would not, would not be screening for that long. Um, and there is still, I'm still receiving requests to screen the film. So, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It, I think it would, be, it would be much easier to sort of understand this problem in terms of economics, but I can assure you that that's not, that's not what's happening.
Well, my name is Kyle Cleveland. I'm with Temple University, Japan. Um, it seems that one of the issues here is the association that the film and yourself has somehow been made with you in, in these political organizations. And so you're kind of guilty by association in their, t in their terms and their views. And also that they think that somehow there's a, a both a political threat and maybe a, a, a personal safety threat somehow with this group. But I think the underlying issue may be more the issue of whether or not the content of the film is somehow tainted by an association with a group that may have a political agenda that transcends and supersedes the, I guess, scientific validity of any of the claims that are being made within the film. So why not take that on more directly, dealing with the claims that are being made and whether or not these are scientifically grounded and therefore not you know, negatively tainted by the presumed association with this political organization. The scientific grounds of the fears of radiation exposure, do you mean? Well, the film's making, you know, it, it's using these various people to make claims about their personal health and, you know, whether or not public health is being protected, whether or not the government authorities are doing the appropriate protective actions for those people, and whether or not, you know, their concerns are being, you know, addressed. And I don't know if you have really weighed in directly on whether or not you think the claims that they're being made are actually scientifically legitimate, or whether or not those are just their fears that may or may not be true, but also just may be, you know, the, the, the very reasonable concerns that people have that they may be affected by this radiation, even if they can't sure. necessarily prove it in the short term. I sure. mean, some of these effects don't come on for years, if not decades, right? right. But I mean, what I'm trying to get to here is, seems the fundamental issue here is an issue of credibility and whether or not the film is somehow tainted by this association with the political group and therefore the claims that it's being made just can't be trusted and that people are withdrawing from it because they think the film is is therefore so ideologically biased that it's it's more of a part of a political agenda than something that accurately represents the experience of those people okay thank you very much um, for me, one of the things that I do, uh, that I try to do as a documentary filmmaker, is I'm trying to document what what it is that the people that I'm documenting um, understand. And and so for me, um, particularly 18 months after the nuclear meltdown, which is when this film began, um, I wanted to know what what is what was it that these mothers understood? What what how was it that they were living their lives? And for me. Um, even if, let's, let's say for a moment, for example, one of the scenes, there's a mother that's measuring radiation. And one of the claims that I've received was uh, the way that she's med measuring radiation is incorrect. And, and for me, what I was trying to depict in that scene was the fact that there's a mother who doesn't trust the government readings to the degree that she feels that she needs to measure radiation herself. That for me is the story. And so f to say, well, she's not measuring the radiation correctly, I think it's kind of missing the point. And so for me, I wanted to know what is it that, th th that these mothers were thinking? What is it that they were feeling? What is it that they understood? Um, and so for me to try to, at that point, particularly only 18 months after the nuclear meltdown, to try to somehow contextualize what it is scientifically that they were experiencing would have been extremely Im difficult, if not impossible. And simply by going to A expert or B expert or C expert to give their opinion, that right there is going to tell you, you know, some... Uh, uh, some of my point of view, right? Because depending on, you can ask 10 different scientists what, what, what they think, and you will have a range from, oh my gosh, this is terrible, we should evacuate all of Japan people, to, yeah, no, it's completely fine, you know, there's absolutely no problem whatsoever, nobody's going to be in any kind of danger, and everything's fine. Well, then who do you ask? You know, who, what expert do I put in the film to help understand what's happening? That film should that, yeah that that film should be made. That's not what this film is. This film is a group of, of a minority group of mothers, um, and trying to to understand what it is that they're that that, that, that they're believing in. That this is this is this is a, a story of, of one group of women, and and not every film can be all films, and and so that film should be made. Yes, let's talk to ten different experts and and and, and see what's happening and and see what their opinions are. 
Uh, Eva Drygańska from the Midori Foundation from Poland. I have a question. Uh, did uh, any Japanese politician a comment on your film or made any actions? I, I mean, uh, um, f first of all, mainstream politicians. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I've had people tell me, you know, oh, you're definitely being watched, you're being followed, your phone is being bugged. Um, you know, I, I simply, um, if that is the case, I uh, am not aware of that. Um, I, 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 would be I would be surprised even now if, if I was on anybody's radar or if this little documentary was on, was on anybody's radar. Um, the, answer, the quick answer to the question is no. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any comment being made. Is anyone? <laughs> I mean, that would be great, right? That would be great if there was a politician that, would, that made any kind of comment because to make a comment about it would, would mean that these women existed. They would have to admit that they existed. After the, after the movie, uh, is that correct? Uh, or have you, have you felt any kind of repercussions or, or um, problems after, after having done the movie? Thank you. Um, you know, um, this issue about my visa is something that I, that, um, I have also um, heard people talking about. Um, you know, there are things that have that have happened over the past couple of years and since I made this film that have been very difficult for me, um, in including a difficulty in renewing my visa. However, and I would like to make this clear, I, I, I have absolutely no, no proof whatsoever that it has anything to do with the work that I'm doing. Um, and I would like to keep the focus on, on the children that are in Fukushima. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, hello, I'm Rebecca Zisman, a student uh, in journalism. I would like to know if you are, if you are aware of any precedents uh, in Japan of a movie being uh, whose screening was cancelled because of like anonymous uh, accusations on the internet, like any kind of movie or like a similar film movie, maybe? I mean, there are, there are, you know, it, yes. Um, I, I don't know about being canceled, but I mean, um, there, are, there are films that, that are, they either are politically motivated or they're perceived as being politically motivated films or with a political agenda that, that, that people find difficult to screen. You know, one of like two famous ones being The Cove from several years ago and the other one being um, Unbroken, which is um, Angelina, Angelina Jolie's um, newest film. And uh, David McNeil, who's a member of the club here, has just written an article about that, um, about the fact that it, it will probably be very difficult for that film to be screened in Japan. And I think that's very unfortunate because it, even if you don't agree with the politics of a film, it still needs to be available for people to watch and to debate about and to be part of that debate. And I think it's unfortunate that pressure can be put on, on particularly on large uh, cinemas, to not screen films. I, I just think that's something that's, that's an extremely uh, an unfortunate um, condition that we're experiencing now. My name is Leon Vogel. I'm a German, uh, I'm a Swiss, ma Swiss uh, filmmaker, independent. And um, first of all, thank you for your incredible work. This film touched me several times. And uh, uh, my question is, if there's a music album and it gets censored, that could be a good thing for a for a music group. Um, when I read on the internet that your movie is uh, was cancelled. Um, I had mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, I, I, I feel sorry for the people who actually want to show this film. Um, on the other hand, especially in a country like Japan, it could be a big chance because even bad, uh, bad um, reporting could be a could be a uh, good good point for you. Actually, thank you. Thank you. Um, 
you know, one of the things that people said to me, have said to me in the past after screening the film, uh, this is before the cancellations were uh, taking place, uh, we, we want to help you to screen the film in more places. And I would always say to them, please don't help the film, please help getting the story out of these families. And if the film can be a tool to help uh, get that debate happening and to help sharing that story about the families uh, and, and children, then, then I'm happy for that to happen. And so, you know, yes, if, if this can be an opportunity for us to think about issues of censorship and self-censorship in Japan, particularly about issues related to Fukushima, then I'm happy for that to happen. Um, and, and so while it's an ex extremely difficult um, problem to be having, you're right. If that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be sitting here before you today and we wouldn't have screened the film today. And so, again, uh, I will just say that I'm grateful for, for what the screening committee did to bring the film to the point where they brought it to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that, that they felt they couldn't continue their work. Um, but yes, I, I, am, I am looking to use this as an opportunity to continue uh, not only screening this film about the families in Fukushima 18 months after the nuclear meltdown, but also in my continuing work uh, and, and, and continuing to document the situation. And so, yes, I, I hope that this can be just one of many uh, parts of a debate that, that very, very badly needs, needs to be happening now. Um, I think we have time for one more question. As a wrap-up question, now that you have the rights back to your movie, what are you planning to do? Thank you. Um, well, I, I'm planning on uh, trying to reestablish the, the private screening process. Uh, it's clear to me now that um, that other distributors that I have spoken to are, are really not able to take the film on. Um, one distributor that I spoke to said to me, if I removed uh, the scenes in question and possibly replace them with other scenes that they might be able to think about uh, distributing the film, but I'm not interested in doing that. I would like this film as it is to be able to be screened. Um, and so I will uh, be working um, with an individual who will help me to, um, to, to reestablish the private screening process. What that means is, is that it means taking a lot of responsibility on myself. One of the things that I had hoped for when signing with the ATBC screening committee was is that if there was a problem at any time in the future, that their lawyers or their team would be able to help me because this is, I've never distributed a, a film this widely before. Uh, it's unfortunate that when, when a problem did happen that they felt that they could no longer continue with the film. So now we are looking at uh, distributing the film ourselves, but that also means that if in the future there's any problem related to that, that's something that we're going to have to figure out what to do with. Um, but I, I will tell you that my intention, as I, as I said before, is to allow private screenings of the film to happen by anyone, by any group of any political affiliation, and that I hope that this will be able to be used as, as part of the debate about what happened in Fukushima and about what is happening in Fukushima. And so I ask you all for your continued support, and I hope that this, um, again, can be the beginning or can be a continuation of a debate about freedom of press and, uh, uh, and media in, in Japan. So thank you very much for this opportunity to be here and to share this story with you. Thank you. Thank you.